Hello, my name is Cecilia and this is The Know. Here are today's top stories. Police arrest dozens of protesters at Columbia University campus. The first asylum seeker is set to be sent to Rwanda. A 17-year-old has been arrested after an attack at a school in Sheffield. And police continue to investigate the Hainault attack after the death of a 14-year-old boy. Keep watching to find out more. Dozens of pro-Palestinian demonstrators have been arrested 24 hours after students occupied Hamilton Hall at Columbia University. Protesters renamed Hamilton Hall to Hinz Hall, a tribute to the six-year-old Palestinian girl Hind Rajab who was killed during the Gaza conflict. Footage shows demonstrators unveiling a piece of cloth with Hinz Hall written on it in red paint. The raid was authorised after demonstrators refused to leave within the given deadline, with the university claiming they had no option as the building was occupied, vandalised and blockaded. Columbia University President Nimat Shafiq has requested police stay on campus until the 17th of May to avoid protesters from returning. At the University of California campus in Los Angeles, violent clashes broke out, with Vice Chancellor Mary Osako saying horrific acts of violence occurred at the encampment tonight, calling for law enforcement for mutual aid support. Shortly after, the Los Angeles Mayor's Office confirmed that police is responding immediately to the university's request for support on campus. The demonstrations are in protest against ties to the Israel government, with protesters calling for boycotts over companies and individuals that have relations with the country amid the ongoing tension between Israel and Gaza. Footage online shows two sides to the demonstrations, clashes between protesters and counter-protesters, and peaceful demonstrations with activists setting up tents as they prepare to stay overnight. The first failed asylum seeker is set to be sent to Rwanda as part of a volunteer removals program. £3,000 will be offered to the migrant as part of the scheme, with the unnamed man being sent on a commercial flight to the East African country. The program, unlike the Rwanda bill, will offer up to £3,000 to migrants whose claims are rejected but cannot return to their home country, and is due to officially begin in mid-July. The Home Office confirmed the money can be used for temporary accommodation, education costs or setting up their own business once they land in the country of their choice, with the previous migrant choosing Rwanda. Speaking on the decision, Kemi Badenoch claimed that volunteering to go to Rwanda proves that the country is a safe one. Criticising the scheme, Labour Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper said, the Tories are so desperate to get any flights off to Rwanda before the local elections that they have now just paid someone to go. British taxpayers aren't just forking out £3,000 for a volunteer to board a plane, they are also paying Rwanda to provide him with free board and lodgings for the next five years. This extortionate pre-election gimmick is likely to be costing on average £2 million per person. A 17-year-old boy has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder after injuring three people at a school in Sheffield. Two adults and a child were treated at the scene after the police were called to an incident involving a sharp object on Wednesday morning. A police spokesperson confirmed, A 17-year-old boy has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder and remains in police custody. Police will remain at the scene throughout the day to provide assurances to those in the school and the local community. And finally, two police officers are currently suffering with really horrific injuries following a fatal sword attack on Tuesday in Hainault. A 14-year-old boy was killed in the attacks, with a male inspector suffering from a badly damaged hand and a female officer suffering from a severe arm injury. In total, five people were injured from the incident. Speaking this morning, Met Commissioner Mark Rowley expressed his condolences to the family of the 14-year-old boy and the officers injured during the attack, adding, after months and years, lots of physio, full recovery might be possible. On Tuesday, police provided an update, explaining that they were unable to speak to the suspect due to his injuries, but that the attack was not being treated as terrorist-related. The 36-year-old man arrested at the scene is currently in hospital, having suffered injuries when his van collided with a building. He has been arrested on suspicion of murder. At this time, given his injuries, we have been unable to interview him. We know there is speculation about his background, including police contact with him. 
and despite urgent and extensive checks today we have found no trace of a prior incident involving him so far but we will of course continue to make those inquiries. As a matter of urgency we're trying to understand exactly what happened and why. This was and is a fast-moving and complex incident and investigation and it will take us some time to establish the facts. Thanks for watching The Know. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to The Mirror for more daily news updates.